clouds. Okay, so I'm recording the session, it seems. That's good. Happy to have you back. And I will start with the homework. So don't worry, Daniela, we are going to discuss the generics and collections again. Can you see IntelliJ? Good. So as usual, we'll start with discussing the homework and then we will actually continue a bit on collections and I'll tell you a bit about all the methods that exist on collections. I don't think this will be an hour session, so you'll have your Saturday evening back really soon. Um, next week though, no. <laughs> Let's uh, start with the homework. So I think the first assignment was to replace arrays with appropriate collections, right? Um, so arrays were these guys with square brackets. And an array was actually an element that could contain multiple elements of the same type, but it had a fixed length. So that was kind of a limitation to it. And there were more limitations. So actually it would be nicer to have a collection here. So what would be the best collection for teams and rounds and well, actually for all of these? What do you guys think? Let me quickly see if I can find the chat. List, yes, that's what I would go for as well. So the collection would be list like this and the generic that's what's going between the um, what is it? The diamond in between the diamond operator. That's the type that should be on the list. Well, in case of teams, the type should be team because on this list there will be teams, so team objects. So this is the collection, and this is the generic. So it's a list of teams, but the main element it's a it's a list. So if we, we can actually go to the list declaration, it's an interface, but you can see here, it's a list and the E in here, it's being replaced with uh, teams in this case. So if we go down a little bit, we can actually see that everywhere it says E in here, that will be replaced with teams. So let's have a look. There should be something that add, for example, at all, at all, remove all. Let me look for add. It's not on the interface. That'd be weird. It's possible though. Um, there we go. So you can see that add is of type E. So when we say list team, the add method is going to be specifically for teams. So we can only add teams or to our list of teams to make sure that there will be only teams on it. Does that make sense, Daniela? Yes, good. Then for round, again, we will have a list, but the generic will be of type round because it will be a list of rounds. And then here we have uh, the winners and the losers. Actually, it should be win S, I guess. And again, the type of winners, that those are teams and the type of losers are teams as well. So they both are lists of teams, but something's happening now and that's all our getters and setters. They still have the array, so they're all broken. So I'm just going to remove them and generate them again. Like this, and I could right click and I can say generate or I can just do alt insert and I can say getter and setter, select them all and hit okay. And then I now have the getters and setters with the lists. Um, well, yeah, with all the lists of teams, rounds, etc. Um, what's still in red here? Ah, so our play tournament method now is broken as well because it assumed we are using arrays. And right now we're no longer using arrays. We started to use lists. So we have to replace this. And actually this was really ugly. So that's a good thing. So this will get prettier. Let's start on top. Um, I'm thinking right now because we can do it the easy way. We can just replace this with size because the length of um, 
a list we get with size instead of length. It's a method right now. And here we can say um, rounds.gets, and then just go for i. But we are getting the list of rounds. And actually, we want to uh, set the team's winners to it. So we can do it easier, I guess, because it was winners equals teams. Mm. So let me check what am I doing here? So saying winners, oh yeah, so winners equals uh, the round.play round. Yeah, so we can do this much easier actually. If I'm going to remove all of this, I can do a for each loop. Do you guys remember that one? We can say for every round, in rounds, I want to do the following. And that is actually, um, Winners equals round dot play round like this. Why not like that? Oh, I need to send in the um, winners here like this. Ah, and it's still expecting an array of um, of teams. So I'm going to fix that soon. Actually, I'm going to fix it now because this is all of it. So I'm going to go to round and I'm going to the play round method. And that is right now. Okay, this is going to be a lot of work, but it's going to return a list of rounds. And then in here, I actually have to replace uh, this function. Because right now, um, it is still working with the array. And we no longer have an array. So again, I am going to have to Mm, let's say winners equals new team, teams dot length, and teams is still an array. Let's see where is it coming from here. So we will make lists of these two. So we'll actually be redoing a lot of our program in order to do this. So it's a list of games. Come on. This is a list of teams and this one can just remain a string. So this is all broken now as well. So let me remove this and generate a better one. Same goes for all of these. So there we go. I'm going to do alt insert constructor that takes all of these. And then here I'm going to say create the getters and setters. There we go. So this one, it will be changed to a new, actually winners will just be teams here for now, I think. Mm. These are the teams participating in the rounds. Yes. So we start with them being the winners. I really need to have a look into this. And then here we can make our life easier as well, I think. Collections that shuffle, that will just be teams. Um, yes, like this. Did you guys do all this as the homework or did you get stuck at some point? I can imagine you could have gotten stuck at some point. What am I even doing here? <laughs> oh, I'm making uh, team one play against team two. Yeah quite creative. Um, okay. So now it's going to be team gets two times I, and here's going to be teams dot gets this piece of code. There we go. And it's going to be games gets I. So I'm rewriting to get rid of the arrays and to start using the uh, teams. But this is actually, let's see, because this is different though, because I'm saying winners I and winners used to be, so I just need to do add here, I guess. Winners equals teams. Mm. So 
I think here winners is just a new array list like this. And then here we can just say winners dot add games. That's I play game like this. I think something like this should do the trick to add an extra closing parentheses over there. Mm. I'm not returning a list of rounds, I'm returning a list of teams. There we go. Um, so if you go back here, this one is going to be fine now, I guess. We don't need this. There we go. So you can actually replace um, or play tournament with this. Let's see, for every round in rounds, winners equals round dot play round. Um, yes, but here we have to do something different though, because we'll have to do an at all because we don't want to override it. We want to add them and remove them again. Hmm. I'm a bit confused because for the rounds, we'll have to set the winners of the current round. Yeah, so we actually need, um, so we'll have to say something like, Round dot sets uh, winners, and then just do this round dot play round like this. But we'll we'll need to know who's still in the game. So this play round method of ours over here, um, this we'll have to actually set the teams participating before we kick off the round. So on top here, we'll have to say um, round uh, no. Yeah, round dot sets teams. And what do we need to set the teams to? Well, to whoever has won in the previous round, but that's difficult because we lost the previous round. So we'll need to keep track of that in our tournament class. Well, what do we have over here? You have teams, rounds, winners, and losers. Losers we're not filling up yet. So we'll just stick with winners still. And we can say that we set the teams to the winners. But this, um, the winners of the round are the ones that our play round method is returning. And then we'll have to override these winners with that too. Because actually, we um, the next time we are going to use winners for the next round. So we'll have to override it. So we need it twice. So we'll actually say winners equals round to play round and then we'll set the winners in the round in here if we're not doing it yet winners equals now we are doing that so that's fine they are set after the round because we set them in our play round method do you guys see that I can imagine this can get a little bit confusing You guys seem okay. Let me know if you're not, because I can imagine this is a lot because, um, well, we set up our application to use arrays in the first place. So if you want to replace them all, we'll actually have to change a lot and actually we'll have to change even more, but I'm not going to do that. I will, but not right now. Because for example, I think game, no game doesn't have it. Round I replaced, replaced the ones in tournament. Well, it's not too bad. The only thing, uh, our app, it's terrible. I just turn it all off because I, I bet to do this again at some later point. Mm, yes, this looks good. Yeah. All right. Any questions about this, about the homework? Is the difference between the collection and the generic clear, uh, Daniela? Yes. Okay, good. Um, yes, <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Yes, let's continue to uh, our this week's topic. And it's actually, it's, it's very much similar to the, uh, to the collections because now we are going to discuss all the methods that exist on collection. So that's going to be very useful. So 
this is the ninth session already. And actually, if we look at our schedule, you can see that next week we're going to discuss exceptions and reading and writing files. The week after that is going to be lambdas and interfaces. And the three weeks after that, I won't be adding more topics. So it's just three more weeks of piling up topics and then you're going to be good to go. Discuss homework, we did that right. Oh, there was one question. Uh, yes, Daniela, come on, give me the question. Oh, yes, I had a, there was one question more in the homework. Yes, the question was, is there any use for yourself in your project to start applying generics? Well, is there? Tell me. Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, usually when you're just writing uh, a general class, just like a team or that's like very uh, applicable in real life, you won't be needing generics. Genetics, generics are really this extra abstraction layer and you probably won't run into it unless you're really going to start doing data modeling and making your own libraries and stuff like that. All right, so last week we discussed the collections framework and I said that it pretty much existed to store groups of objects rather than single objects. Well, very much like uh, arrays to some extent, but the collection framework, it has lots of extra benefits and we'll see them today because um, many of these benefits, they're inside all the methods that the collection framework comes with. So I didn't tell you something last week that I will be telling you this week and then you can forget about it for another two weeks. So the collection framework actually consists of four main groups. I told you that, right? It has lists, sets, queues, and maps. But what I didn't tell you is that these are all interfaces and we didn't discuss interfaces yet. We've seen classes though. We've seen our own classes or class tournament or example, class dog, all these classes, which is properties and methods. Interfaces are, uh, a little bit like a class, but then not really. So they are usually separate files. So they're like classes in that sense. They consist um, of, well, actually two things, constants and methods. And most of the methods in interfaces are usually abstract. That means that they don't have a body. So you can forget about all these details, but these interfaces, they're not really classes. So you cannot say new and then the name of an interface as we can with all our classes. So this is why when we say list and then something something equals new, we don't say list because we cannot say new list. Let me prove that to you. So here, for example, if I would say list, um, let's just do a list of dogs. One, because we have a list already. I cannot say this oh, because, well, now it wants me to actually make an implementation of the interface. Let's not go there. Because this is an interface and I cannot instantiate an interface. So this, it's not possible. But what is possible is when I say array list, because this one actually is a class. Look, it. Oh. It's a class. So we can say new array list in this case. Um, but this one, it's an interface. Look there. So we cannot say new list. Okay, good. Um, but if you have a look at this list, list one, you see all these methods and they're super useful. We can use them for all sorts of purposes. Um, you can grab stuff from the list, remove special indexes. We can add things. We can add a bunch of things, get the lengths, remove everything on the array. We can do a lot of things. Just go and have a look at all the things you can do. And when you dive into these, things gets really interesting, but I'm going to uh, not bore you with that yet. That's for two weeks from now. So don't worry too much about it yet. Um, Let's go back to our PowerPoint. Yes, so these are our four main interfaces that are part of the collections framework. 
and they all have many implementations. So for example, list, we've seen array list, but there's also a linked list. And we have the set, the unordered unique values. We have the hash set, but we also have uh, the ordered sets, the tree set, I think. So there's a whole bunch of uh, types of special sets. Same for queue and the same for a map. But today we'll just use the most uh, common ones. Let's um, start having a look at all of these. So here we have the array list. Um, we can add stuff to it. The set, a hash set in this case, add stuff to it. A queue, array deck, uh, we can add stuff to it. And the map and the hash map, and we can put stuff to that. So that's different there. Mm. Looking at um, these, we can see that this, this part is usually the interface, and then this part is the specific implementation. So this part will never be the interface, but technically this part could also have been array list instead, because that's the type, so that would have worked just fine. Well, let's start with the stop one and dive into that first. So, oh, mm, hold on. I told you I was going to be quick, but I don't want you to go that quick. Um, there you go. Oh. Yes, that's better. So here are the methods on a list collection that you'll commonly use. So I already said we can add stuff to the list. So what's happening on here? I'm adding three items to the list. Hi, hello, and bye. And then I'm asking for the list size. Here's the output. It's three. A list is ordered and has indexes. So this one has index zero, index one, and index two. If I'm saying list at all, I'm going to add all the items of list to it. I'm going to be double my size. So I'm going to add hi, hello, and bye again to my list. So they're all on there twice as of now. Um, so if I then again ask for the size, it's going to be six because it got twice as long because I'm adding myself to this uh, list. And then if I'm going to check whether a list contains high, it's going to be return true. It's going to say, yes, that's on the list. Um, I can remove an index or I could remove an object. So here I'm removing actually two things. I'm first removing index one, uh, so that's hello. And then I'm removing object uh, high. Then I'm going to get the first. Well, what's the first after that? It's high. Is that weird to you guys? Why does it say zero? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is an O, oh, it's for objects. So it's like index uh, here. Um, so this is just actually IntelliJ giving you a hint of what uh, your parameter is going to be filled in for. Um, I don't know what my question was. So then we're going to add um, one to our list. Uh, sorry, we're going to add two or index one. We're going to add something. And if we then again get the first index, it's going to return something. If we say clear and then print the size, we see we emptied our list and then zero remains. With this index um, adding, it's actually not replacing it. It's just adding it. So after this, the list length would have been, uh, let's see, Minus two plus one, so five. Does that make sense? I think this is kind of straightforward, right? These methods, they sort of do what their word says. You should just play around with them a bit, see what the output says. And as opposed to um, our array list, or sorry, to our arrays, if you print a list, it will just give you the nicely formatted um, Oh, yes, that was my question, Arno. Good point. Hold on one second. Yeah, so if you print a list, it's actually going to nicely say whatever is in the list. So let me show you that too, and then go to the question that I asked and forget about it. And then luckily, Arno is asking again. Um, so let's go here and let's make a list of strings.
And here I'm going to say um, add, and I'm going to say like I did. Um, what was it? Hi. Hello. Oops. And um, Like this, and then I can actually just print the whole list like this. It will look nice. And then I guess list remove, and I can say it should remove or object high, and then I will print it again. There you go. Let's run this very sophisticated program. So as you can see here, it nicely removes high for us. So hi, hello, and bye. But what I did in our previous example was something like all, and I just added the whole list to it. So let's do that and run it again. And then you can see it is removing the first high, but it's not removing the second high. So there was still a high on there. It's just going to remove one high, the first one is going to run into. Does that answer your question, Arno? Yes, good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, all right. So play around with this. That really makes it clear. Come on, next slide. So then there's also the set collection. And uh, the set collection, if you remember correctly, these are the unordered uh, values that cannot contain duplicates. So all the elements on our set, they are unique. So if I'm adding the same thing to my set, it's actually not going to crash or something. It's just going to return false. So the add method is always going to return true when it succeeded into adding something to our set, but it's going to return false when it couldn't because it was already on there. So here I uh, have our hash set and I'm saying set.add high. And then I'm going to say hi again. And the first time it's going to say true because it managed to add high. But the second time is going to say false because it has only unique values, so it cannot have high twice. I'm adding by, I'm adding hello, and I'm asking the length, and the length will be three. I can remove it just like I did with the list. I can get the size again. I can see whether it contains something, and I can clear the set. So it's very similar to the list. I think this is the main difference. You cannot add things uh, twice to it. Yes, questions? No, go ahead, play around with this. That really helps to get it cl more clear. And then we have the queue. And the queue is a bit different because, well, the words you use for a queue are different too. So you can add to a queue. And adding something to a queue, it's just like when you're getting a queue for, I don't know, a checkout somewhere. The first one in line will be the first one to be helped. You can also um, offer something to a queue, but there is, uh, it, and actually it does the same as add. So it's just going to be added to the queue, but there is a difference and this difference will make more sense after next week. But add, if it's not possible to add the element, it's going to throw an exception. And that's some sort of a bit like an error. It's not really an error, but something is going wrong and your program is going to crash a little. And offer doesn't uh, throw an exception when it cannot add it. But other than that, the core functionality is the same. Then we have peak and peak is going to have a look at the first element in the list. So it's just going to see what's the first element in the li list, but it's, or in the queue actually, but it's not going to remove it. So the peak method is just going to say what is go going to be the first um, element, uh, which one is on in front. So if you were really cute to check out, peak would just see who's uh, first in the in the queue. Then we have poll, and poll is actually um, grabbing this first element and removing it from the queue. And then we have remove, and remove will also remove from the queue. You cannot say remove and then in the middle, because if you remember correctly from last week with the queue, you can only access the ends of our collection, not the middle. 
Um, so remove will just remove the first one that uh, would have been removed. And then the same story, remove would throw an exception and pull would not. So offer, pick and pull, they are actually unique to the queues. Offer is some sort of add, pull is some sort of remove and pick is, let's see who's first. Questions? No? Good. Um, then the last one of the collection framework is the map. And the map is different than all the other three because it has actually two values to be um, one entry. So it has a key and it has a value. And it's a bit like a list because the list has uh, the index because it has a one, a two, a three, a four, etc. But instead a map, it has a key and it can be any sort of type. So actually the key of a map could be a different map. But for now, let's keep it easy and let's have a map with string as a key and integer as a value. If you remember, the keys have to be unique because the keys is how we identify your values. And if there is double keys, then things get messy. We don't know what value we would be talking about. It's like having two the exact same addresses or something. You then you don't know which house you're talking about. Um, so here we put four elements to our list with four different names and four different values. You can imagine these could have been, I don't know, names and ages. And here we're going to do some of our map methods. And one of those are the contains key and the contains value. So contains key is going to do a search here and contains value is going to do a search over there. Well, both of these exist, so they're returning through. Then if we get Beth, we're grabbing this uh, this value over here, the 32. If we ask the size, we get the number of entries it has. So these pairs, we call them entries. And then there is a few things that are actually unique as well. And that's the key set and the values. And key set is actually going to return a set of the keys. And we have values and values is going to return some sort of list of all the values. And we can ask for entry set and then we're just going to get or uh, in pairs back like this. So these are the methods that live on the map collection. Yes, you guys okay with that? <laughs> That's good. Um, I just want to say something about helpful other methods and that would be it for today. We have seen these four interfaces, so the list, the set, the map, and the queue. And there's actually some external things that are very useful to combine your collections with. And they are on some sort of helper classes or utility classes, as they are also called. And we have the arrays dot something and the collections dot something. And the collections is the class and the arrays is the class. So for example, arrays has an as list uh, method. And if we insert an array in there, it's going to return a list of that same type. And the collections has a shuffle method that's just going to change the order of whatever collection we're putting in. Then there's also a binary search method, which is um, for finding something. And there's even more useful methods on these classes. And if you want to do something and it's not possible with the methods on the interface itself, it's very likely that you'll find yourself ending up using arrays or collections instead. And I'm seeing something in the chat from Leon and he says, perhaps not smart to demonstrate with strings. Could you specify? Because I'm also not sure when you said this. <laughs> Ah, the uniqueness with sets. Yes, that could have been a problem, but these were luckily in the string pool, so it was going to be fine. Yes. Um, okay, so Danielle, you're saying that you don't understand why you don't need classes with generics, and 
I'm not sure what you mean, because you do need classes, otherwise you cannot have generics. Because ge generics, they really live on classes or on methods, but methods live in classes again, so you'll need classes anyway. Oh, you don't understand why I don't need classes in our project with generics. Yes. Um, so for example, we've seen that lists, they are perfect for generics because we can say, well, this list, it will contain items of type. And then just we insert a type between the uh, brackets. But in our homework, we don't really have classes that are suitable for generics because we have players and players are quite plain. They just have similar, um, yeah, it's just the same kind of thing all the time. We have teams and there's nothing too variable about that either. We have a game, we have rounds. The only thing I could imagine if you were to use this project for not only for football, but also for other types of sports or something, then your rounds or your tournament could have a generic, but still that would be a really far stretch. Because where would you have used generics then? Um, I thought by the, the teams, because, uh, for example, the professional team was extends to the team. This yes. The professional team was an, an child. Yeah, uh, of team. Child of, yes. Yes. Then you need, I thought in this example. So you thought that maybe you could have a team with some generic specifying whether it was professional or amateur or something like yeah. that. Yes. Mm. Yes, then you would have made player or something a generic, but no, it, this is really a thing that you would use inheritance for. And generics are really for um, making variable types inside your class. I think they call those parameterized types. So, for example, if something in your class, um, if your class could be reused for multiple cases, but then you'd only have to replace some sort of type in your class with an X, with a variable, this is when you would use generics. And if we have a look at our team, um, hold on, <laughs> I'm trying to go to our team. Yes, here it is. I made it abstract, but I'm not sure what here would have been the generic then. Because if you look at what makes it, I'm not sure this, this might be empty. Yeah, so this uh, budget and this amateur team, oh, the amateur team doesn't even have it. But the professional team, it has an extra variable and you cannot give it an extra variable using generics. You would really have to use inheritance for that. Does that help? Yes, sort of. <laughs> yes, just play around with it more. It it should get clear. And also, I, I added some uh, articles uh, in the video on these topics. So you could also dive into these to see if it, if it's if you understand it better and see then you can better understand the difference between the two. Mm, any other questions at this point? No? Okay, um, then after the session, I'm going to upload uh, the session clearly. And there's no additional videos this week, but under the session, I will add the homework and I will add some articles that contain some more in-depth information. And the next week we'll be discussing exceptions and reading and writing files, which is super cool because then after a program, we've made some permanent changes and that's quite awesome, right? All right, um, thank you so much and have a lovely week. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.